Hello, it's your girl Roz, the queen of Manly's Bender family. So, since this month is May, which is also Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to um, talk about a couple of things. So, in May of 2019, I came out about my mental health. Um, I had for so long um, suffered from, diagnosed and suffered from um, depression, anxiety, PTSD. Um, and, and it was a struggle for me to come out about it, but because I, for so long, I was good with hiding it. I was good with, you know, just faking it till you can make it and smiling and things like that. But then I was, um, a co-host on this show, on the McYon show, and as we were on the show and we were trying to help people and help them heal healthy and things like that, I realized that I was one of those people that we were talking about. So I needed to really um, look in the mirror and take my own advice. Not only that, I realized how much I was hurting. Like no one really knew. I mean, some people did, but the day-to-day -day people didn't know how extremely bad it was. So I came out about it in May of 2019 now when i came out about it i came out with with a plan of how everything was going to be executed how i was going to go to counseling how i was going to do these things you know even sit down um with my husband and um sit down with my husband um and my manager slash it's a whole lot of slashes to that but had a whole had a whole plan uh per se of how i was going to be dealing with this because it was it was time for me to heal healthy it was time for me to deal with the things i have been hiding for so long and you know i i smile all the time i'm laughing i'm helping people like nobody really knew that i was really struggling um in the inside needless to say october came around and things were still going in place and things were still going in plan but then october 2019 my mom passed away and that made my plan change because I was so confused not only when I came out I came out like on camera I also went and had a conversation with my with my mom my husband was there when I had a conversation with my mom let her know some of the thing that I was dealing with some of the things that I that I that I never said that I needed her to say and some of the things that I needed her to know and to hear me and I even remember um, breaking down to her and when I was breaking down she um she interjected listen my mother ain't play like respect is a big thing I remember her interjecting and I remember saying no mom be quiet and just listen um and I just remember, and I remember Mr. James was there, and Tony was there, and I was just letting it all out, and I just needed her to know that it, you know, it was time for me to deal with it, which she agreed. Um, all of this was in May, so again, come October, and my mom passed away, unexpectedly to me. Um, I When I got a call that she was in rehab, that wasn't unusual, because my sister and I had been dealing with her being in rehab for a while but then when I got to rehab um with my grandmother I remember sitting and seeing this little sign that said uh hospice and something if something that begins with a p and something else I forgot and I was like so confused and I remember asking the lady like is this the rehab center and she said yes but this floor is hospice I was like really I don't even know what I was. Me, and, I remember me and my grandma looking at each other like, huh? And then my grandma was like, she I forgot what she asked me, but she was like trying to reassure me like, nah, it's not what it is. But anyway, I spend the night there and spend the night there and watch my mom transition. So add that on to all the list of things that I was dealing with. Um, not to mention, man, family issues. I have watched death take a toll on families, my family in particular. Um, we are nowhere near where we should be, and we're all at fault. It's not one fault more than the other fault. We all we all at fault. Um, things left unsaid, things said, uh, things not done. Th I mean, just everybody's at fault. 
um and then in all of that me just going into a deep dark place and then fast forward eight months later my my grandmother passed away my my mother's mother um and then the feeling of abandonment something that i had dealt with for so long the feeling of abandonment the feeling of n nobody really fighting for me or care for me all of that stuff was just trickling up for all the things that had transpired in the last couple of months um and then fast forward eight more months and then my mom's husband passes away and I still haven't dealt with all the things that I said that I was going to deal with in May of 2019 because stuff just kept happening to people that I had just shared what I was ready to start doing the people that I had just shared with my pain that I was hiding for so long and my pain goes back to years of pain years of things that had happened to me that I wasn't ready to talk about I didn't talk about when I talk about my domestic violence abuse um people just know some of it right they just know just a little bit of what I was um dealing with during those years like my teenage years but uh I had dealt with sexual assault and other stuff prior prior to those things I had had dealt with prior to me dealing with um my own physical uh domestic violence issue physical all of them um mental all of those I was dealing with it prior to my my teenage years my high school years but I still never talked about it I didn't do any of that I didn't I didn't do what I knew I needed to do to start healing, to start so that I can become who I needed to become and do the things that I that I needed to do. I remember finally opening up to my husband about a lot of stuff. And, you know, the one thing I love about my husband is that he has yet to judge me, to, to leave my side, to make me feel less than, to... He has done none of that. He has been a true champion in, in, in trying to be there the best way that he know how. It is not easy loving someone who deals with depression, anxiety, and PS, PTSD. It's not easy dealing with somebody who's just dealing one of, with one of those things. Um, and yet, so unselfishly, he continuously to try. And then he realized, like, I don't know how to deal with this. Like, I don't know when I'm supposed to do it. So unbeknownst to me, which I know now, he was reaching out to get counseling on how to, how to deal with this. Like how to know when to say, what to say, not to say, when to touch, when not to touch. Um, and of all the things that I had gone through within those, those eight months spans, he was there for each one of them. Matter of fact, um, which I've talked about on video before, he was actually holding my mom's hand when it got cold. And he stayed the night the whole time um, she was in hospice with me. So he watched everything that I watched and saw everything that I saw. And, you know, I feel like, you know, he's a, he's a black male living in America who has a million of things that's going on, a million things that... that that he hides because I mean that it's a fact but now he is watching his wife just crumble before his eyes his his children crumble before his eyes and it's like oh I have to be strong and there's times when I had to say to him like I know I know that you're hurting like I know that you're you you need help too and I don't want to be naive to or for you to think that I don't see you like I don't see that you need just as much help is I do. I don't see that you are also opening up and have opened up to me about your own uh, trauma that you have uh, been dealing with and holding on to. Um, so I say all of this to say um, because I'm starting to get emotional and I'm keep trying to hold it in. But I say all of this to say that mental health is real. Um, it is so real. It is so real that it's scary real you know we see and hear of, of, of people committing suicide of, of of things happening and and we look at it like I don't know like that's not me or that couldn't be me or I don't know anybody but you do you know somebody 
um, who is dealing with that, who is struggling, who is fighting to live another day, literally. There used to be so many voices in my head, and not to say that they are still not, but they're not as, 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 I don't know the word, as much as they were. The one thing I uh, think about with some of the, um, some of the things that I kind of tune out that I deal with is that I really, really, really know what it feels like um, not to have a mom, right? And I am, my God, I am struggling. But with saying that, I don't want my kids to see that. Like, I don't want them to feel what I feel right now not having my mom. So that is one of the things that push out any kind of too far thoughts like when it come i'm like no no my kid you know it's like and it's like oh people say oh you gotta do it for yourself and i get that but i know i know what this pain feels like and we all grieve differently so i know everyone feels different but i'm watching them grieve three grandparents you know um and then i'm grieving my mom so mental take care of your mental health um you, you have to. I mean, I have lost people in my life for reasons. Some I don't know. Some I do know. Some I thought of, thought about it like this was too much for them. Um, I I don't know if uh, someone who is who is close to me know that her words hurt me and still hurt me to this day. I know I haven't talked to her about it because I just choose not to. But um, she told me one day when we were out to eat that... Um, that I was exhausting like our friendship was exhausting this is the day that I actually was going to come out to her about my mental health and I was like wow when she said it it hurt I remember just going to the bathroom like geez that's the problem that's why I'm losing people because it's not easy loving someone who is dealing with um with all of these things and and then life just keeps happening and happening and um I'm just really trying to I don't know I, I'm just literally trying to move every second like not the day like every second I mean this weekend is a prime example of all the things I had planned and things just kept happening and I kept calling my mom to tell her things just to realize that my mom's not here then I want to call my bonus dad you know to say something to him and quickly hung up the phone I'm like god he's gone too like um so things are happening and there's moments I'm I'm smiling and there's moments I cry. I mean, I get up, I go to work, you know, I do things for the kids, I, you know, I'm a grandma, I do all these things and I'm like, they don't even, I don't know if they see me or not, but there's times when I just like get quiet or I'm trying to hold in my tears like, oh, what's wrong with you? You know, Roz, you seem different today. So I have to say, oh, I'm hungry or, or I'm, I'm tired. It was just one of them days. No. I'm trying not to cry. I'm trying. I'm trying to put on this brave face for you guys. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to believe that I'm okay. So I'm sorry that I'm not laughing right now. And I'm sorry that I didn't come in to work super, super happy. But that stuff is starting to drain me, too. Like, it's starting to drain me to continuously to put on this big old smile when I'm, I'm cringing on the inside. Um, but then I'm quickly reminded, okay, you have to do this, you're at work, so you have to, you have to, um, put on these face, and, um, I told a couple of co-workers, we, we played this basketball thing at work, you know, I haven't played basketball since, like, 10th grade of high school, I don't know, um, and I said, like, you know, we're here at work more than we see our family, so this is supposed to be a, you know, a place where you come and, you know, and then I remember one of my coworkers was like, no matter what I'm going through at work, when I get home, I let it all go and I just be home. And I was like, yeah, and that's great for you. But when I go home, I go home to a house full of grieving people. I go home to all of my kids trying to figure it out. I go home trying to figure out which one I'm going to need a hug today. Which one of them is going to need a talking to today? Which one can I I push today or is it going to be me today to walk in the house and see my mom picture and cry is it going to be me today that I don't know is it going to be my daughter who wakes up in the middle of the night and just screaming like mommy I miss my grandma is it going to be my son who like mommy I just don't know how I can keep doing this is it going to be my other son who has never lashed out on me but lashed out saying I don't understand what he's going through like he's hurting like 
So I get it, like your home is supposed to be that safe, that safe place. But in my home, I have to be that bright face. Like I have to be that that face that's like it's okay, and I got you, and you know, mommy's here and things like that. But I'm 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 cringing, like crumbling. Um, you know, you to know my kids, you know, I post about oh they don't this, don't that. But when the music stops, when the people are not around where we can let go and try and understand that we're not controlled we don't have to control our emotions because we're home it's a lot it is it is so much um it is just so much it is just so much to deal with but um i say this to say deal with it please i just deal with it deal with your mental health deal with whatever it is to do have the conversations that need to be had um had to free to free you to free you from holding on to the things that you cannot control get a therapist get a counselor go to grief counseling um there's many hotlines there's many organizations there's people out here you're not the only one and i'm saying all this to to hear myself say it too so that i can remember also that i am not alone and that there's people out here and there's people that love me and there's people who who care about me and that I have a purpose. So I say all that because you do too. You have all of these um these these things also and life is gonna happen and although that I know that death is a part of life that does not make it any easier. That does not make this pain that I'm feeling less. Um I knew death was gonna happen but you never really know that it's gonna happen to you or when it's gonna happen to you or how you gonna deal with it or how you gonna explain it to an eight-year-old um who lost grandparents back to back and that's just on my side like she also lost um family on my husband's side like so it's swing and death or to hear your eight-year-old like i can't go to another funeral it's just too much jeez you've been to too many funerals at eight that's it's not okay that's not that's not how it's supposed to be and then you know COVID and you have to just be stuck in one place and, and try to figure it all out and deal with um deal with so much you know my boys are black men <laughs> black men that I am trying so hard to to keep safe to keep grounded to to help them maneuver on how to really deal with their pain because i don't want them to keep it all and god knows i don't want them to do that i don't want any of my kids to be like me like i hid so much for so long and then i don't if i can just if they can just not be like me like not do the things that i did and force a smile and and and, and i don't want that i want them to heal properly properly um I do have two that's in counseling, the youngest two. I can't force the oldest two to go into counseling. I, I can't force that they're grown. I can't sit there and make them, although I continue to advocate advocate for it. But it's a lot to do with your mental health. Don't don't turn 40 and try to figure it out. Hence, I'm 40. Um, don't turn 40 and or 50 or 30, for that matter, or whatever age. Um, let's get away from what goes on in this house stays in the ho this house. Yeah, I was taught that and that's exactly that's exactly why I'm forty trying to figure why I'm trying to figure out. Um if something is going on in a house that's hurting you then deal with it. Wh whatever way you need to deal with it, whatever whoever you need to call, whatever therapist session you need, whatever long whatever it is, like don't don't do that. And deal with your mental health because if you don't deal with the traumas in your life they will deal with you no matter how far you try to push it back or your mind try to suppress it it comes back your minds came back in a major way just when i'm thinking i'm i'm good and i'm married and i'm happy and things and then boom it all came crashing down and i'm sitting here trying to explain everything that i've been through so it's may Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm Roz Manley, and I'm struggling with my mental health. And I thank everybody who have came and gone, those who have 
prayed for me privately, prayed for me publicly. Those who have, those who have been there, um, those who have taught me some lessons, even the ones who have gone. I am not perfect, not even a little perfect. I am an imperfect person trying to make sense of who I am and not become who I don't want to be or become the thing that I'm working in the community to stop. I don't want that. So for whoever listened, whoever, whoever heard this, um, be kind. You never know what somebody else is going through. Listen, because you never know what you may have done or said that offended or hurt someone. Apologize. It's really an easy thing to do and forgive. Not for them. I promise you that is just, just mainly for you. longer than what I wanted to talk and I'm hiding a snotty nose and uh, I got this lump in my throat so I'm going to say have a good evening um yeah spill with whatever it is that you're hiding um know that people come around and people go and it's really nothing you can do about it for the most part. Remember the serenity prayer. Regardless of whatever your beliefs in, that is the truth. Accept the things that you cannot change. Know the difference. Change the things that you can. It sounds simple, but it's, it's extremely hard extreme.